sorry for the change of scenery. I'm in Bonaire at the moment. Um, so yeah, this is all I got right now. I, I'm a little tanned, as you can see, looking brown as fuck. Um, yeah, I, you can't do anything about it at the moment, so uh, you have to deal with this for a few months, and then I'll be back in, uh, well, in a few weeks, and then a few months, and then I'll be white as hell again, just like usual, and I will look like a ghost again. So excuse this face, let's just go into the video. You're watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Slash Your Pepper here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be counting down my top 25 movies of all time. Also, not just horror, but the majority of it is horror actually. And there are going to be some pretty bad ones in here for most people that are going to be <laughs> disagreed with a lot actually. There are going to be mo there's like one movie in here that I don't think anyone has on their top 25 movie list ever. Uh, but I do. Um, so I'm going to start off with my honorable mentions, which go to An American Werewolf in London, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, Child's Play, Freddy vs. Jason, and Alien. In no particular order, really, so these aren't like my top 30 to 25 or anything like that. Um, just some random picks that are some of my favorites, but uh, just didn't make the list. So coming in on number 25, um, this is not really the shocker, this is the one that's on many people's favorite list, it's gonna be Halloween. Uh, yes, the original from John Carpenter. Uh, this movie is awesome, I always enjoy it. I, it's a tradition for a lot of people to watch this every Halloween and I'm one of them, I always watch it on Halloween as well, myself, um, because it's just an awesome movie. Uh, it's just really atmospheric, the music is awesome, Michael Myers is awesome, and it's best in this movie really, because he, here's, he's, he's still the shape, you know, uh, he's really humanized in all the sequels and stuff, but here he's just like a ghost, really. Really, what else can I say that hasn't already been said about Halloween? It's my number 25. Coming in on number 24, it's gonna be Jeepers Creepers. The Creeper is one of my favorite horror character, horror creatures of all time. His motivation is pretty cool. Uh, he eats just to stay alive, really. So his motivation makes a lot of sense. I like the whole desert and stuff. The two main characters are awesome. Um, they're actually brother and sister because, uh, you know, the director didn't really want, like the writer, I'm not sure, but someone didn't really want it to be like a couple like a love story and I believe there was like some behind the scenes stuff happening with the director I haven't read into that I probably won't read into it read into it um, but for some reason uh, for some people it ruined the movie which I think is absolutely bullshit uh, if you like a movie you like it and if there was drama behind the scenes you should still love it um, regardless of that really uh, because the movie is a piece of art and the drama behind it is, is a whole different story to me Number 23, oh shit, a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but it's going to be The Hitcher 2, I've been waiting, <laughs> I enjoyed this movie so much, I, um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's one of my favorites, when, going into this movie, I was like, this is going to be fucking horrible, why I'm doing this to myself, but the reason why he's picking him up is pretty understandable, Jim Halsey is awesome again, uh, he's really traumatized, and this movie takes some turns that I did not expect it would take. The new villain, which is not John Ryder with um, Red Hour, he, I mean the new one, the new Hitcher in this movie is really awesome too. I mean, he's nothing compared to Red Hour's John Ryder, but this one is different. I was like, oh, it's probably gonna be another creepy, menacing. Um, villain but it's actually a pretty funny villain and I like that it's something different it's kind of like a Freddy Krueger sort of character he makes jokes and stuff like at one scene he's behind a bar and dressed up as a cook which is something Freddy Krueger would do you know he's really playing and having fun with his victim in this uh, movie like Rock Hour uh, John Ryder did that too but he was still menacing you know and you don't really get that in this movie coming in at number 22 is Don't Breathe 
uh, this movie blew me away. I did not know what to expect. I hadn't seen any trailer. I bought it on Blu-ray because I heard some good things about it. I watched it together with my grandpa and grandma. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I was like, there was like a tagline, something like you don't know what's in this house or something like that. I I'm not sure. So I was like, maybe there, it's gonna be with monsters and stuff. Uh, but it was something completely different that I did not expect, and it's awesome. I have watched this movie over so many times and I will keep on recommending this movie to fellow horror fans. Number 21 is Fade to Black. If this movie did not have the main character being a horror fan and uh, being so likable, I, it wouldn't have been this high. But this character is awesome. He is actually a horror fan which makes it super relatable for all other people in the horror community. And um, that makes it a really fun watch because there are like easter eggs and mentions of movies. Uh, that we all know, like 70s horror movies, you know, like Halloween, is, there's a poster of Halloween in the background, it's one scene. There's a poster of Tourist Trap in the background, it's one scene. Um, which makes this movie pretty relatable and funny. The kills in this are awesome, the main character has, a, has different costumes. I'm not gonna stop talking about Fade to Black now, and if you want to have a more in-depth view on my opinion on this movie and my thoughts on this movie, then make sure you go to the Dr. Pepper Diner and watch episode 1, because this was the first movie I covered on that show, and uh, check that out, the car is over here or there. Number 20 is gonna be Sing Street. I'm a big fan of 80s music, I love Duran Duran, ever since I was a little kid, my dad, um, had a CD like from the greatest hits from Duran Duran and uh, ever since I've been in love with, with the band and uh, other 80s bands and singers and this movie um, is all about 80s music which is why I love it so much the story is really great it has great heart to it and it's absolutely overlooked and underrated uh, lots of more people should check this out if you have not seen this one, you should definitely check it out because, uh, especially if you're a fan of 80s music, because the soundtrack of this movie has some original songs too that just sound as if they're made in the 80s, which is so awesome. I can't recommend this movie enough. This is like my go to recommendation whenever someone asks for a great movie uh, outside of horror movies, of course. <laughs> Number 19, another movie that probably no one has on their list, but I love it. It is Night Warning, also known as Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker, which is kind of a silly title, but I, I, I kind of like it because it's just the 80s cheesy title, you know. Where do I begin with this movie? I, It's been a while for me since I've watched this movie. Um, I've watched it a few times actually, but I, it's been a while. So I can't really say that much about it, but I do plan to rewatch it soon. I do a Dr. Pepper Diner video on it. But it's basically like a twisted aunt and nephew that live together and um it's kind of like uh there are, there are like some killings happening and the police think the nephew did it or then later the nephew finds out the aunt did it and stuff. I won't spoil it. But it's, it's really awesome and there are some great twists in this one. It has some really great 80s vibes to it and it's really underrated. I mean the, the full movie is even on YouTube I think. Uh, <laughs> so nothing is stopping you from stopping this video or watching this video and then going to watch Night Warning because it's on YouTube. Next up we have The Burning which is an awesome film. This movie has, has some of the greatest kills ever. So a great killer, a great story and surprisingly it didn't even have a sequel which is <laughs> surprising uh, considering it's basically like a Friday the 13th ripoff but honestly this movie is better than some of the Friday the 13th movies which is coming from a guy that loves Friday the 13th I mean it's my favorite franchise from uh, of all time really not even just from Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers it's my favorite franchise of all time but The Burning has some great kills I mean the raft scene that 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 just should say enough. I mean, the effects are awesome, and when I watched this for the first time, I was like, "Wow, these these effects are awesome. These are like Tom Savini uh, level of effects." And actually, then when the credits roll, I realized it was actually Tom Savini. Then we have the Return of the Living Dead, which I did in Dr Pepper drinking game with David Bernardino with. 
still editing that one um but that one should be online pretty soon at uh, this movie i uh, really what can i say that hasn't already been said the zombies look great the effects are great the characters are great the lines are great just everything about this movie is so awesome the pacing is great the final battle is awesome and i'd even go as far to, as to say that i love the sequels too i have seen part four and five and i'm not really planning to but I love part three actually. That's actually my favorite after this one. I prefer it over two, which I don't think many people do. I, I don't know. I really enjoyed that one. Next up, we have Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland. Now I'll break it to you right here. This is my favorite Sleepaway Camp uh, of all of them. I love this film. It has great effects, great kills. Angela, the main killer, is uh, one of my favorite killers of all time. She is really funny, and the kills uh, she does are really cool too, actually. I don't think you hear a lot that Sleepaway Camp 3 is someone's favorite. Most people enjoy uh, the first one the most, but I actually don't. I actually think this one is way better. Number 15 is going to be Silent Night, Deadly Night. This is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Um, I know, pretty naughty it's a tradition for me to watch this one every single christmas i love billy the main character he's awesome i love the fact that the beard isn't all over his face and it's like this that makes it a little more iconic actually to me he's also one of my favorite killers of all time the kills in this are awesome i really like the music it's pretty creepy and it's definitely the best in the franchise of silent night deadly night i haven't really watched the sequels, I've watched some videos about the sequels, but I'll probably watch them all this Christmas. Number 14 is gonna be Sam Raimi's Dark Man. This is awesome, an awesome movie. I watched this without having seen anything and it completely blew me away. Especially the music, it just it's it's by Danny Elfman who also did the Spider-Man music. And if you know me you know that the Spider-Man movies are a really important part of my life because ever since I've seen those movies I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker but this mu music just gave me chills and it was like re-watching Spider-Man for the first time uh, just a little darker of course <laughs> number 13 is gonna be Friday the 13th the final chapter most people think this is the best Friday the 13th well I don't think it is the best one I definitely it is definitely one of my favorite movies of all time Jason is uh, is arguably at its best in this movie. In my opinion, he isn't at its best, but his look is really awesome and he's really badass in this one. He's definitely one of my favorite Jasons. I just prefer part 6 Jason, which part 6 is on this list too, if you haven't guessed it already. Number 12 is gonna be Back to the Future. What can I say? Well, it hasn't already been said, you know? Uh, it's Dark Brown is hilarious. Marty McFly is awesome. Michael J. Fox does a great job in his movie. He is at its best in this movie, probably. I watched this when I was pretty young for the first time. And it, it at the time it was probably my favorite movie. First I preferred the second one. And I'm kind of switching every once in a while. If part one is my favorite, part two is my favorite. Uh, but as of now, part two is, or part one is definitely my favorite. Number 11 is going to be Friday the 13th, part 6, Jason Lives. Jason in this movie is my it's my favorite look of Jason. It's possibly my favorite performance of Jason. I'm kind of switching between CJ Graham and uh, Kane Hodder always and uh, I mean I love both. I don't really prefer anyone as of now. I like uh, Kane Hodder's uh, physical strength and stuff and look but I probably prefer the performance that CJ Graham gives. Um, though I do also love the like heavy breathing that Kane Otter always does, you know, with Jason. Uh, so yeah, it's always switching between those two. Number 10 is another Sam Raimi movie, Evil Dead 2. The effects in this one are so good. It didn't really have a big budget, but still what they managed to do with this movie is absolutely insane and the cinematography in this film is awesome it's really Sam Raimi style you can definitely see that Sam Raimi directed this film and that's not just because of the Oldsmobile uh, that's in every film of his 
but also the directing and the effects. And of course, the dark comedy. <laughs> Number 9, I kind of cheated here, it's gonna be Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2. Uh, where do I begin with these two? <laughs> these have been my favorite movies, or one of my favorite movies ever since I watched them when I was like 6. So yeah, they, maybe I'm blinded by nostalgia for it, but I, will, I don't give a shit. As long as I love them, I'm okay with it. I mean, I don't give a shit if you don't like me liking the film, because these are always going to be some of my favorite films of all time, because they inspired me to wanting to be a filmmaker myself. Number eight is going to be Killer Clowns from Outer Space. David Bergantino introduced me to this film. I had already heard about it, but I watched it for the first time. Uh, or like second time because I watched it in preparation for the Dr. Barber drinking game but I watched it really for the first time with full attention when I watched it with David uh, in the Dr. Barber drinking game video if you want to check that out there's a car somewhere here but this film is really funny it has great effects it has gotten a lot of attention recently like on Instagram you see a lot of photos from Killer Clowns from Outer Space which is fun because uh, I don't think it got that much attention before but now it definitely does. Number seven is gonna be Fright Night. I'm not gonna talk about this one too much. I already did a Dr. Pepper Diner video on it, which is also somewhere here. Um, so you can just go watch that because that's way more in depth than I'll ever talk on a ranking video. Number six, I mean, if The Hitcher 2 is on your tw uh, top 25 list, then the first one is definitely on your top 25 list. So number six is gonna be The Hitcher. This is one of my favorite films, the atmosphere, the lighting, the setting, just the cinematography, the acting, the characters, just everything about this movie I love so much and when I first watched it I was on the edge of my seat because I was so, it, there's so much suspense going on. The music is awesome, this is like almost a perfect movie to me, like the, the next few movies are like perfect in my eyes and I can pop these in any day of the week and just enjoy it and have a fun time. Number five is gonna be The Blob, the 1988 remake. The characters in this are awesome, the gore is awesome. Just again, just like The Hitcher, it's a perfect movie. The music is awesome. When I first watched it, I was scared after it because I, you know, maybe that's just because I was home alone, you know. That always helps the movie of you being scared or getting scared but I had to take a shower afterwards and was like oh shit maybe the blob is gonna come out of the shower you know <laughs> number four is gonna be a nightmare on Elm Street the Wes Craven original one obviously because who prefers the remake honestly over the original it also with this one what can I say what that hasn't already been set it is an amazing film Freddy Krueger is awesome uh, arguably at its best in this film. The music is really scary. It's not one of those soundtracks that you listen to often like randomly as background music, but it's definitely a soundtrack that really works in the film. Heather Langenkamp is awesome in this film as Nancy Thompson. Number three is gonna be The Abyss, which is James Cameron's best work in my opinion, and it's an absolute crime that's th that this movie is not on Blu-ray. Why isn't it on Blu-ray? It's insane. Like, why doesn't James Cameron just stop making Avatar sequels and just go make a Blu-ray release of, of The Abyss already? Because everyone wants it. Every, the, I'm, I'm a big fan of this film. Love it to death. I love all of these characters, this crew. I read the novelization, which goes into these characters a lot and it's like schematic of the section of the ship and stuff and I've watched this film over so many times one time I even watched it and immediately after it I watched the director's cut so I didn't even have to take a break I just immediately was like I need to watch this movie again so I watched it two times in a row which is insane I know but I still did it and that's one of the reasons why it's my favorite films of all time the story is awesome the effects are awesome and when you hear the behind the scenes shit that was going on it's absolutely insane that this movie even was made and finished like this because it is so well done it's impressive honestly especially for its time even the computer effects still really hold up to this day and if anyone hasn't seen the abyss yet you totally should because it's it's 
one of the most impressive movies ever made. Number two is gonna be Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, which used to be my favorite film of all time, but uh, another movie took that place, took the throne, really, <laughs> which we'll get to later. Now, The Shining, like lots of people have talked about it already. The music is awesome, the acting is awesome, the characters, I know every, everything I listed in all other movies uh, so far, this movie has it too. And though the music isn't really the type of music that you'd listen to like on a daily basis, like as background music, but it really works for the film, just like with uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street music. And that music, that music thing, like not randomly listening to it, also goes for my number one, which has got to be Intruder. This is my favorite movie of all time. It stars Sam Raimi, Ivan Raimi, and Bruce Campbell, some of my favorite actors and movie filmmakers of all time. This has my favorite kill in it, the uh, head split scene, you know. So that scene is my favorite kill of all time. And there were scenes in this where I just was like, holy shit, that is gory as hell. And usually I don't really have that, but with this movie, man, like, like the characters, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but some of the characters' death are, deaths are absolutely insane. I really like the setting, the story, and the ending. And the story really surprised me. I was like, man, did I really just do that? Because that was a pretty risky ending, honestly. I love it for that. I'll definitely do a Dr. Pepper Diner video on Intruder soon, uh, once I get home and can just show the blu-ray and stuff then i'll do a dr Pepper diner video on intruder so keep keep a lookout on that thank you guys so much for watching my top 25 movies of all time and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one see ya you're pissing me off roger it's gonna be wild tonight